Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is the English translation of the Majlis of Hazrat Mawlana Qamaru Zama Sahib Dhamad Barakatuhum, which took place on Monday, the 23rd of Ramadan, 1443, corresponding with the English date, 25th of April, 2022. Now, this Majlis took place before the Dhuhr Salat at Darulum Kantaria, Buruj, Gujarat, India. Hazrat Wala is saying that I have this kitab in front of me, the Sturus Salikin. In it, there is a risala by the name of Asharu Qawaid Fi Taskiyatin Nufus. Now, this kitab is a kitab that I read out for Islah and Tarbiyat for those who wish to have their Islah and their Tarbiyat done. An Arab Alim has compiled this year, but because it's completely in coordinates and related to our Mizaj, it is according to it. So that's why I quote from this kitab as well. And today this has come in my heart and I'm reading from the sixth principle of uh, the, uh, the laws of Tazkiyatun Nufus. So this particular principle is locking the entrances which remove man from purification and cast him into evil cast him into evil so all those amals that take us out of the path of tazkiya this is the actual maqsad that the anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam had been sent for the Allah Ta'ala sent them for that. Huwa alladhi ba'atha fil ummiyyin rasoolam minhum. It is Allah who has commissioned amongst the unlettered people a prophet from amongst them. Yatlu alayhim ayatihi. That recites to them his ayats. Wa yuzakki him. And he purifies them. There was a senior person. And somebody said to him that here uh, is a place of uh, tazkiyah. So he mentioned, he mentioned that I've got no ta'alluq with tazkiyah. I've got no ta'alluq with tazkiyah. Allahu Akbar. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself has commissioned the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam for this purpose. So where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to speak about the importance of uh, ta'aleem, then he brought uh, Ta'aleem first in those ayats and on other occasions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought Tazkiyah first to show the importance of Tazkiyah. So Chashmo Band, Labba Band, Gosh Band, Gar Nabini Noor Haq, Barman Bahand that shut your eyes, zap your lips and plug your ears then too if you do not see the Noor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then laugh at me. Do not look at those things that are not uh, correct according to the Sharia for us to look at. Similarly, to hear those things and to allow those thoughts to pass our minds or to speak about such things. Asake ghair, mere khanae dil mein kaise? Ke khiyale ruke dildar darban apna. How can, how can anything other than the thought of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come into my heart when the thought of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala itself is my doorkeeper, it is my God. Hazrat Marana Shah Wasiullah Sahib was in his apartment on the top floor when the sound of music was penetrating through the windows and he said, Ab kaise bacha jai? Now such a great sheikh, but look at his concern. How will we now protect ourselves from this music? That this was the importance they attached to looking after their ears. Sometimes, not always, it wasn't his habit, he would go through the uh, newspapers and then he put it aside and he said, Ab kaise bacha jai? But lao kaise bacha jai? There were, must have been some type of pictures, etc. And he said, now, how will we look after our eyes? So, akhir dam tak, right till the last breath and moment, islah ki fikr honi chahiye. That we should have the fikr for 
Islah. On one occasion, we were at the shore in uh, Bombay. Now, if you would see, you would understand this here, you're able to relate with it. You would see the ocean is there. And then you would have these huge rocks and boulders that are put there. Then you would have the road and then the hotels and all those big structures would then come there. So Hazama Akim Akhtar Saab used to say he was there and what Shadda must with great passion and uh, desire he gave a, a, a talk and hi highlighted these particular uh, points that look here the waves are coming and they're hitting against these boulders and they are going back through. But what is the object of these boulders? Why did they actually put them? So that these huge skyscrapers and these buildings can be uh, protected. Similarly, a person, Allah has given him eyes and ears and this tongue. By means of all of this, the example of it, it is like those boulders. They, the sun, or the test and the trials and the tribulations come and they hit against the eyes, ears and the mouth and then they are warded off. But the great treasure of the heart is kept protected. Allahu Akbar. So if these boulders were not there, those huge skyscrapers and those hotels would have been destroyed long time ago. Similarly, here yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put for us these things so that in the name of the hifazat and the protection of the heart. So we should look after our eyes, look after our tongues, we look after our ears so that the asal, the heart does not become uh, corrupt. So when these sins, the waves of it come and they smash against the eyes, ears and the tongue, they should actually be warded away. On one occasion, we went for some work. We went into the marketplace and the bazaars. But it so happened, we didn't even miss our Maghrib Salat, rather we read it there with Jama'at. But when we came back, Hazrat Marana Shah Wasiullah Sahib displayed so much of displeasure saying that how come you people came so long, so, uh, so late, and you took so long? Now what was it after all? He was worried about us in the marketplaces and that we would be uh, in front of so much of these evils. Chashmo band, labba band, gosh band, gar nabini nure haq barman bakhand. So, Shut those eyes and zip those lips and plug those ears. Then too, if you do not see the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then laugh at me. So the author then carries on, Hazrat Wala is reading from the Kitab, he says that the sixth principle is locking entrances which remove man from Tazkiyah and cast him into evil. A person is in dire need to shut the windows which sully and trample his nafs. The Sunnah presents a parable to us which explains how dangerous it is for a person to get occupied in anything which destroys his deen. Now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has quoted an example in the hadith which reads, Allah sets forth the example of a straight path which is walled on both sides. The walls have doors which are open and over which Curtains have been suspended. There is a person at the entrance of the path who is announcing, O people, all of you enter this path and do not wander about. Another person is announcing from above the path. When a person tries to open any of the doors, the announcer says, Whoa, do not open. Do not open it because if you do so, you will enter through it. Now, the path. 
refers to Islam. The two walls refers to the limits set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The open doors refer to the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the caller at the entrance of the path refers to the Quran. And the one above the path refers to the admonition which is present in the heart of every Muslim. Every Muslim. Ibn Rajab humbly rahimahullah said, the person who is in this world has left, the person who is in this world has left steadfastness on the path. Opened. If he has left steadfastness, then what has happened in, in essence? He has opened the doors of prohibition which are in the walls on either side of the path and entered them either by committing unlawful desires or doubtful actions. Now the spiky hooks which are on either side of the path have hooked him in relation to how many doors of prohibitions he opened uh, and entered in the world. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, ayat of the Quran, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّوا مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ وَيَحْفَذُوا فُرُوجَهُمْ ذَلِكَ أَزْكَى لَهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا يَسْنَعُونَ Say to the believers to lower their gazes, to lower their gazes and safeguard their private parts. In this, there is much purity for them. Surely Allah knows everything they do. Now, Qala Abu Hayyan al-Undulusi, Abu Hayyan Undulusi says that lowering the gaze is mentioned before safeguarding the private part because the gaze is the precursor to adultery and zina, the one who steers a person towards immorality and its tribulation is severer, severer and excessive. Now, Sheikh Saadi Okay. You know, for us, Hazarwala is saying when we leave home, going to the madrasa, or we leave the madrasa coming home, there are so many types of fitness, there's so much of music, there's so many lights, different, different types of lights and colors of lights, all of this just to distract the attention and the gaze of a person that look in this direction. Now, if you don't look after this eyes, then your heart becomes uh, contaminated and polluted. Umar bin Abdul Aziz, when Uthar used to come for the Baytul Mal, he himself, and he would advise his wife to hold her nose, meaning that not even to smell. Because if you would smell the scent of that Uthar, then you have taken benefit from it. Allahu Akbar. Now, Sheikh Saadi says that the person who safeguards his private part and gaze, the filth with which immoral people are sullied with, will be purified and his actions will be cleansed by virtue of abstaining from the unlawful which the carnal self hankers after and invites him to. Whoever desists from something for Allah's sake, he recompenses him with something even better. Min husni Islam il mar'i tarkuhu ma la ya'ni. This is why the beauty of the Islam, the beauty of a person's Islam, lies in his discarding whatever does not concern him. Applies to uh, this here applies to futile speech, futile casting of gaze, and so on. So layani, to abstain from layani and useless talks is important. I mentioned this yesterday as well. Amlik alaykalisanak. This is no statement of a Sufi. Rather, it is the statement of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And najat and success lies in it. Look after your tongue. Amlik alaykalisanak. Wal yasa'aka baytuk. Your home should be comfortable for you because when you come out of your home, you will be bound to get involved in uh, useless activities. Wabki ala khati'atik and cry over your sins. 
When you stay at home, you would have become more acquainted with the house people and the things that are happening there due to which you will be able to make tarbiyat. وَلَقَدَ خَلَقْنَا insan. We have definitely created insan. وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ And we, we know even what his heart and mind is talking about. So, layani is not only restricted to speaking. Rather, Hazrat Tanvi rahimahullah says, even regarding uh, writing. And Hazrat Wala then gives us the examples that used to take place in the time of Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib. That a person would write and then he would say, write, Me Bakhairiyat Hu. And then he would alert, reprimand, and advise. What was the need of writing Me? First of all, that is being self conceited and it is a sign of, a sign of pride. Bakhairiyat Hu is enough. Why was the need of me? And it is layani, it is unnecessary, it is undesired, unrequired, it is not required. Similarly, a person would write, Alhamdulillah, he would scold at that time because the person would not write Allah's name clearly. Write the ha of Allah clearly. Alhamdulillah. Now these are all etiquettes. Similarly, Assalamu alaikum, say it clearly, say it clearly. Clearly, also when we're making the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, La ilaha illallah. The ha on the name of Allah should be uh, clear. And it should be uh, said clearly. Now, there are great fawaid. Hazrat Khaja Baki Billah has written about this year that there are many benefits when a person says all each of the letters in the dhikr uh, clearly so, la yani is and can be related to your tongue, to your eyes, and to your ears. So, we should make an effort for this. When we make an effort, then we would be granted this nisbat. And this nisbat is normally granted to people in their youth. So, Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah said futile speech and futile casting of the gaze are the propellants of most evil actions these are the two largest entrances for shaitan because they neither get tired nor fed up a person should therefore remain sharp and intelligent he must ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he must ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for patience and salvation. He must severe every path which would contribute to the destruction and the deprivation of his nafs and his self. The deen of a person is his capital. If it is lost, he will suffer loss in this world and in the year after. This is more so in our times where temptations are falling on people like raindrops. The doors of doubts and desires have opened wide through these modern gadgets, dubious internet sites and deviated programs which have driven many people towards eternal destruction and diverted them away from guidance. We beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for soundness. Ameen. So, Hazrat Wala is saying we should make dua. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min sharri nafsi wa sharri maniyyi wa min sharri maniyyi O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you against the evil of my nafs. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you against the evil of my sperm. Allahu Akbar. Hazrat Manana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to make so much of kalam on this. He says that only Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam could have made a dua like this, taught us such duas. Now, the Ramadan has come for this so that we can get taqwa, so that a capacity can be created within this nafs to stay away from all these type of futile activities, whether by the tongue, ears, eyes or heart. The Taraweeh Salat is also for this. Allah Ta'ala give me the tawfiq as well. So the goal of Ramadan is Taqwa. Zuyyina lin nas hubbu shahawati min al nisai wal baneen Huffati al-jannah bil makari Jannah has been covered 
with difficulties. If you want Jannah, you would have to undergo some type of difficulty. And fire of Jahannam has been covered with uh, desires. If you want uh, to be saved from Jahannam, you have to stay away from this carnal and base desires of your nafs. So this deen is for us to gain recognition. Allah Ta'ala bless us with the Islah of the nafs. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha. Oh Allah, grant my nafs and my soul its piety. Wazakkiha anta khayru man zakkaha. And purify it for you are the best who can purify it. Anta waliyuha wa maulaha. You are the guardian of this nafs. And you are the owner of this nafs. If we are the individuals next to this nafs, then you are the creator of this nafs. Therefore, O oh Allah, you purify this nafs for us. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim. Wa tub alayna innaka anta tawabur rahim. Bi hurmati sayyidin nabiyyil kareem. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.